Hello everyone, today we're taking a look at the Avant Quad 03 Freestyle. Freestyle meaning no props in view and a top mounted battery. At least that's what freestyle means to me. Maybe it does to you. I think it does to them as well. And you might remember that we did the more racy style sort of 03 not that long ago. A few weeks ago, maybe it was six weeks ago. I can't remember. I lose my timelines all the time. But I have a disclaimer I have to make about Avant Quads. I, I'm a fan of, at the very least, how they construct their quads. They fly very, very well as well. That's going to be for you to determine. But when it comes to the construction, the build quality, I find them to be top-notch. Always good-looking solder on there. They, go, they don't go 70 or 80%. In my opinion, they go all the way when it comes to construction. The, the motor wires are always secured down with tape. Uh, we've got a look at this particular case. See that capacitor there in the middle, right dead center? They designed a TPU mount to secure the capacitor to the stack. So it's not just sitting in there and dangling around. And also, as you look in there, see how the wires have an intended path? And so it keeps everything really neat and tidy. They're one of two companies now that actually go to the trouble of securing the battery lead to the frame or some component of the frame in order to keep the battery from tugging on the ESC pads. One of two companies to do that. So I think you need to know that. I'm still going to try to be as objective as I can. I do have a few complaints about this particular quad right out of the box, but I think they're kind of a hidden gem within our drone community and they probably deserve more attention than they're getting. So maybe you want to uh, hit that link down in the video description. If you choose to order, use code NICK5 in the message box when you order. That way they know that uh, you came from this video. Uh, I'll start off with one complaint I have right off the bat. I'm not a fan of foam pads up top. I prefer a rubber mat that is going to keep the battery from moving. So that our battery stays with the quad. And in those cases where we crash and maybe we have some sort of difficulty in being able to reach it, we have a fighting chance that the battery's still attached and we can possibly retrieve the quad. Not only does the battery stay put and it doesn't do any damage, but you have that opportunity of maybe getting your quad down or from some place where you can't necessarily just go easily there and pick it up by hand. One thing else I want to highlight about what they've done with this all-in-one flight controller is they use BL Heli M on here, so it does have bi-directional D-shot and RPM filtering already enabled. You don't have to do that work. And it comes pre-tuned. And it's got a pretty good tune. So let's get down to the desk, we'll do the specs, and then we'll hit that flight. Motors are Brother Hobby, 1504, 3950 kV motors. On 3016 Gem Fan Tri-Bladed Props. Camera is the Caddx Baby Rattel. The all-in-one flight control board is made by JHEMCU. This is the GHF420 all-in-one flight controller. Again, BL Heli M, so you have RPM filtering. It also comes with Betaflight 4.2.8. VTX is also made by JHEMCU. And it is the 5848 Mini that goes from 25 milliwatts to 200 milliwatts. And you can use smart audio from your radio, of course. Mine is the FR Sky version, so I have an XM Plus receiver right down there. TPU mount for our FPV camera. Rush antenna also mounted with a TPU print. Battery lead is zip tied down right here to this rear standoff. Antennas are extended just outside the frame here. It's a unibody design, and each motor is mounted with three screws. We have metal securing this flight stack as well as the VTX, so you don't have any nylon in use to secure the uh, stacks down. So that's a good thing and something I appreciate as well. And here's a little closer view of that TPU mount that's got a hold of the capacitor. It's securing it in place as well. Motor wires are secured down with some of my favorite tape. I call it Emacs tape. Others have referred to it as gaffer's tape, but I'm not so sure about that. It comes with a mount adapter that every retail comes with, and the control board and a few other mounting screws and an extra set of 3016 gem fan props. As I mentioned, the bottom plate is a unibody and it looks to be 3.5 millimeters thick. Top plate is 1.5 millimeters thick. Arms are six millimeters wide. Motor post to motor post, I'm getting about 141 millimeters. Without a battery, it weighs 118 and a half grams. In the flight I'm gonna show you, I use this Cotter battery. It's a four cell, 650 milliamp, which brings the weight up to 195 grams. For more flight time, use an 850 milliamp 4S battery, which brings it up to 217 and a half grams, still under the 250 gram limit that we're looking for. I also found that I could get three minutes of flight on this puny little 550 milliamp 4S G&B battery that's super old. And with that battery, it weighs almost 190 and a quarter grams. Here we go on our flight. Again, this is the Cotter. 
4S, 650 milliamp battery. I think that's probably the sweet spot for most people. Uh, I also flew it on a China Hobby Line 650 milliamp, but China Hobby Line kind of underrates their batteries as far as the milliamp. Uh, you know, it, they're bigger than everybody else's batteries, so a lot of people like them. There's nothing wrong with like them. I think the problem that I have with China Hobby Line batteries is the weight. You know, uh, flying a 650 is a lot closer to the flying weight of an 850. So if you have 650s, you'll still enjoy them, but it'll be closer to the flight feel of the 850. Um, so we're going to see a flight time of nearly four minutes on this. It's hard to describe the difference between a top mounted battery and a bottom mounted battery. It's easier to just kind of feel it. And I think where I feel it the most is wherever you're at speed and you're kind of cornering, whether it's a slow corner, like a gradual corner, or it's fast. It just, you have this different feel as to, instead of being pulled through the corner, as though there's some sort of uh, centrifugal force pushing you away from your line, that it tends to hold a little better. And why we don't use Top mounted batteries in racing, I suspect, is because what we many of the, the racers call the, bent, the pendulum effect helps them in fast turns. Maybe. I don't know. I don't race. I don't race professionally at all. That's just from what I've heard of other people who do race and, and compete in events is that, you know, universally, racers, at least the ones I'm aware of, are using bottom mounted batteries. So it is a different feel. I think if you're more of a sort of freestyler pilot you would really probably do yourself a favor by flying a top mounted battery uh, and then other people will just not want the props in view i'm someone who likes to see the props in view just a little bit i don't want to have my view dominated by props and motors uh, so that's something else that you have to weigh out is you know are you someone who doesn't mind a little prop in view or are you someone who just wants a clear fpv view i can see it both ways um, I don't get too bothered by uh, props in view. I, when I go down and crash, I actually want to see my props in view. It tells me more about the condition the quad's in when it does crash. But, you know, if you're wanting to do something with HD and they do have a naked GoPro mount that you can get from their website as well, um, you certainly probably wouldn't want the same sort of setup that you might if you're not doing HD, if you're just going to blast through a field or something like that. And this setup is, is made to be efficient. It's made to give you good flight time and also good authority in the flight. And hopefully that comes through in video. I've done some quicker maneuvers. I've tried to work in some slower, sort of smoother maneuvers uh, just to try to highlight how it flies or how it kind of differs in flight than maybe more traditional. I know I do the same sort of stuff. I've got the same flying space, but I, I do what I can to try to highlight differences in quads when I do fly them. I do have one other complaint when it comes to this particular quad, and that is that there aren't any landing feet. Um, my preference would be that we have some sort of landing feet, whether it be foam or some sort of uh, print that we mount underneath the motor, so I think we oftentimes call those skids. Something down there is the, another thing that I think they could do, and they could do it for relatively cheaply, and it probably wouldn't cost more than an extra maybe dollar or two in the total cost of the quad. Wouldn't most of us pay an extra dollar or two to have some skids when it comes to a top mounted battery? Just something to keep our screws from scraping across the cement when we come into land and that's a pretty definite sound. It's something that we do hear uh, when we uh, come into land and we land on cement is when we don't have any skids we can hear the, hear the screws. Flight's finished up. We're going to have a flight of 3 minutes and 48 seconds, and you're going to see when I come off the battery and we go back to the home screen that our battery pops back up at above 3.6 volts per cell. So we're in good shape as far as flight time and battery health. I want to take a moment here just to give you a closer look at some of the wiring and the solder, some of the things I talked about in, in that uh, face cam sort of introduction of the quad. Everything is always so neat and tidy when it comes to Avant quads. It makes them really easy to review but it makes it hard to kind of find things to complain about because isn't that what reviews is kind of about? You know, it's easy to show the good. It's hard to pick out all the bad. I, I guess you could say that this screw is a little bit short. Maybe. I don't know. It seems the right size. You can just see the silver peeking out the top. Seems like they took the specifically this length of screw to use here. And then we've got this little rubber ring here. 
Uh, that gives us some shock uh, absorption. So if we do come in for a crash, we've got a little bit of movement that might be in there. Uh, we do also have our gummies on this side. And see at the very bottom there of that, hopefully that comes through in camera, that is a metal nut. So it gives the standoff, or excuse me, not the standoff, the screw, a lot of security vertically. So it shouldn't move around much, but the flight controller does have gummies on here. Let's see if I can move it a little bit. Um, so the, the red parts that you see in there, that's the gummy for vibration dampening. And then up top, we've got everything separated by some sort of vibration or shock absorption. And, you know, that, that helps to keep the components healthy throughout their life when it comes to those repeated crashes that we're, we're just going to have. We're going to have a lot of crashes. That seems to be what this hobby is. Crash, repair, repeat, right? Crash, isn't it fly, crash, repair, repeat? <laughs> I think that's the phrase. So I guess, you know, that might be something you're not crazy about. They do offer a DJI version of this as well. So if you're a DJ, if you're, excuse me, if you're a DJI pilot and you have the goggles, maybe even the radio, they have a version of this that comes with DJI ready and you can pick that up as well. Uh, the price point on this, Avant quads are always going to be a little bit more on the price side. Not terrible, but if you pick it up without a receiver, it's $178. If you look at it from uh, an XM Plus, like I have here, that's another $14. And then if you get a Crossfire, it looks like they're showing a Nano SE here. Uh, that's another $32. It seems like Crossfire prices are going up. Maybe there's some sort of rare earth metals or something that are special to that. I don't know. I'm kidding around. I don't know. Uh, but whenever you look at their site, uh, if you add uh, Nick5 in the... Uh, coupon code or not the coupon code the message box down in there then they know that you came from here there'll be a link down in the video description uh, to this product page but they have all sorts of quads they have the kira and they have the avio and they have they have long range quads that are four inch with gps they have five inch quads i mainly stick to their micros which are around the three inch prop and less uh, also when you order you can add extra lipo straps you can add extra top and bottom plates they have not quite an a la carte ordering style, but they have some options that you can uh, pick up other pieces that you might need so that you have some repair already in-house when you have your quad. So when you go out, everything should be fine. The Naked GoPro mount that I mentioned is another $13 as well. It's a two-piece mount, so you have a piece up here that has the, the, the vertical pieces that it slides down into for the naked part, as well as some screws that go uh, on top that secure that down. I'm a little bit concerned, a little bit concerned that it won't be very stable horizontally because it only has these two screws. There's no screws down here. The print mount extends back here, so I guess in the worst case scenario, you could use a zip tie across those rear arms for the naked GoPro mount to help secure it if that were to be needed. I don't know. I didn't have it, and I didn't try it out. Obviously, I didn't try it out because I don't have it. Don't really have any other complaints. I, I, a stretch here. Maybe the size of battery wire. We could go up a gauge or two. Maybe. I don't think it's going to make any difference. You know, we're not running 6S. So, uh, you know, trying to find other things. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. I, this is pretty much the standard size I think I see on just about all quads, though. Uh, I pointed it out in the quick specs, but a little closer shot. You know, the antenna wires are secured down very neat, nice and neat. Again, they all have a path, a wire path. Everything seems to have its own place, its own home. You don't have to really be concerned about, you know, pushing wires back for any old reason. Even look here up by the camera. They've already kind of organized those camera wires to where they, they don't move around but yet you can grab a hold of the connector if you needed to in order to be able to connect your control board and make a change to uh, any of the camera settings. Hex screws all around, button heads down the center, and then we've got the, the standard heads out here on the motors, and then on the top we've got button heads again. Our camera mount is also a typical button head. Those come with the camera, so that's not a, a big deal there as well. I kind of think this mount's interesting, and I wonder a little bit if some of these curves aren't just for aesthetics, but also for weight, you know, because this does come in well below that 
250 gram limit, so you could probably fly an 1100 milliamp battery on here and get you know nine, 10 minutes of flight possible. Well, depending upon how you fly, if you're really steady, slow sort of cruising, you might get 12 minutes. Um, on the 850, trying to run it hard like I do in the backyard, I got about an additional 50 seconds. So maybe that's just because of me and the way I fly. You know, it's my fly is largely a racing style. I, I work in some other things that I'm comfortable and that I can put into a, a, a full flight review. Um, but if you're a more smooth, not blasting so much, not so much 100% throttle, not so much, you know, high speed hairpin turns, you'll probably get a lot more flight time than you've seen. But even with the 650, to get almost four minutes, I think is pretty dang good. So there you go. There's my review of the Ciro 3. There's a link down in the video description. Again, if you do go to their site and place an order, I would appreciate it if you put Nick 5 in there or Nick Burns 5. I don't... I always forget what they tell me to put in the code. <laughs> the money's not all that important. It does help to fuel things to come to the channel, uh, but it is kind of important for them to know where their traffic comes from. So if you put Nick Burns or Nick Burns 5, They'll notice it. They'll find it. Uh, you'll get a 5% discount and you'll get a quad in the mail <laughs> and then whatever options you might choose. And don't forget, I do have the uh, DJI version of the standard Ciro 3. See there, we got our Vista in there. That review will be coming up probably in the next week. I started flying it this week as well. I've actually had it a little longer than that. You know, when I did the original version, I really liked this uh, flight style. I had the uh, analog first. And so then I wanted them to fulfill all their orders because I knew that at that time getting Vistas was kind of a chore before they, they sent me the digital version, which I did pay for, by the way. So that will be coming up soon. I know at least one person who's waiting on, on that video. I, I, short story, you add weight, you feel the difference. It still flies great. Just a little bit shorter, a little less punchy, a little more weight in those corners. But that's what you get. You know, you add that weight and you get that crystal clear HD FPV view. So if you have any questions about the Ciro 3 Freestyle, please leave them in the comment section below. I appreciate your time. Thanks for watching.